my name's Steve Mann and welcome to Paper Classroom. Here we have another history module and in this particular module we want to be talking about tissue machines. Now tissue machines are in a way very different from traditional paper and board machines. When people are making paper and board they're concerned about things like uh, formation and speed, strength, but in tissue machines, the whole focus of the tissue people was how to get rid of all that water. Because on tissue machines, there's a lot more water than any other product. Why is there so much water? There's so much water because they want to have the best formation they can have. And why do they need good formation? Well, if you take some traditional paper, you hold it up to the light and have a good look through it. If the sheet is lovely and even, you'll say, oh, it's got good formation. If it's all blotchy with light spots and dark spots, you'll say it's got bad formation or it's wild. We have different terms. But some tissues can be 12, 14 grams per square meter. At that sort of grammage, you don't have light spots and dark spots. You've got paper or you've got nothing. You've got a big hole. So the formation must be as perfect as it possibly can be. And the only way to get good formation is to have a very, very dilute stock. The more dilute the stock, the further apart the fibres are. Therefore, when they land on the, on the wire, the less influence any one fibre is going to have on any other fibre and therefore the better formation you're going to get. Just to give you some idea of consistencies for different types of products. So if you're making board, the consistency in your head box or floor box could be around 1% or even more. If you're making new sprint, you do want better formation than board, so you might tend to operate at around about 0.7% consistency. If you're making cigarette paper, uh, cigarette paper is what, 25, 26 grams per square meter. You want really good formation there. So then you're down at 0.1% consistency. By the time you come to facial and sanitary tissue, the grammage can be less than cigarette paper. And so consistency could be 0.01%. And if you move into things like tea bags, where a tea bag is typically what, 12 to 14 grams per square meter, you really do want the best formation that you can get. I've seen some uh, head box consistencies where you've got one gram of fiber per ton of water. So with tissue, there's a lot of water to get rid of. Now when they first started to make tissue, they used a conventional foidrinia. They found that the formation wasn't good enough, so they diluted it and they diluted it. And then eventually they came to the problem that they just could not get rid of all the water that they were adding and they wanted to dilute it even more. So what did they do? Change the design of the machine. And they went from having a conventional breast roll to this one here, which is an open breast roll. So it's almost like a wire mesh. The idea there is that you could push the stock onto the wire and it would then go through the wire and through the breast roll just to aid water removal. That wasn't good enough, so they needed to increase the water removal. So rather than just having an empty space and allowing water to go through, what was the next logical step? The next logical step was to put a suction box inside the breast roll. So you had a floor box here, a pressurized floor box that was pushing stock through the wire. And on the underside of the wire, you had a vacuum in the breast roll. So it's almost like another cooch roll. You had a vacuum in here pulling the water through as well. And even that wasn't good enough. So the next stage was the incline wire machine. 
I believe there are only about 12 of these in the world, which gives you a clue that it may well be a little problematic and not the best design in the world, but they are still being used. So here we have the floor box. This is on an inclined wire. We are pushing stock through there and underneath we have a set of vacuum boxes pulling the water through. So the pressurised floor box is pushing it through the wire and underneath the wire we've got vacuum boxes pulling it through. The sheet reaches the top of the incline and then starts to go down and in this area we can have foils with very aggressive foil angles up to about 25 degrees. From here, the, as you might expect, the sheet is transferred onto a felt and then onto the Yankee. And I want you to remember that for the next couple of slides. The next idea was, um, well, they really, they were watching what other people were doing. They were watching what the newsprint people were doing and they were developing twin wire machines. So the tissue people also got into twin wire machines. So here we've got a floor box that squirts the stock virtually vertical. It gets caught between these two wires and the wires are wrapped around this farming roll. Now it's a solid farming roll so the water cannot escape that way. Here we have pressure applied by the outer wire and the pressure applied uh, and this is related to something called Bernoulli's theorem the pressure applied will force all the water out through this way it gets to this point here the wires separate the top wire goes back on its loop the bottom wire carries the sheet onto a felt and then from the felt onto the Yankee now, in both those cases, the sheet, just like traditional paper making, is being carried from the wire, transferred onto the felt, and then transferred into the drying section, into the Yankee. Now, one of the tissue companies, Kimberly Clark, had an absolutely brilliant idea. They said, if that second wire, that outer wire, isn't, uh, inner wire, isn't doing any dewatering, then does it have to be a wire? And so they replace that wire with a felt. So what you see now here is here's your head box, the slice. It's pushing the stock to uh, here between an outer wire and an inner felt. Here's your farming roll again. So the outer wire applies the pressure, Bernoulli's theorem. All the dewatering goes that way. The wire at this point separates and the sheet is now already on the felt so you don't need to do any transfer. That felt will carry it directly onto the Yankee. So it's so really a brilliant uh, design innovation. And just to finish off, just to mention there are two typical uh, configurations in tissue machines. This is called a C wrap. So here's the floor box. It's squirting the stock almost vertically between this outer wire and this inner felt. So it's in a C shape. So this is why we call this the C wrap. And then finally, slight design change. This looks a bit like a letter S, therefore this is known as the S wrap. So again, the stock comes here, it gets caught between the inner and outer supports. They separate at that point, the outer one goes that way, the inner one comes this way, carrying the sheet. And then the last thing to mention, the very latest development in tissue technology is to actually, rather than using a standard press roll to press the sheet onto the Yankee, ready for the drying, is that the standard press roll 
has been replaced with a shoe press. Now the shoe press is the best press that there is. Everyone dreams of having a shoe press if they haven't got one. Mills are now being built with uh, two shoe presses rather than the three traditional regular presses. I did see some literature that one mill in China was built with three shoe presses. We'll talk about why shoe presses are so good when we do the tutorials on uh, pressing later in the series. Well, I think that's all I want to talk about today. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, please enjoy all our other videos. Give us some feedback if you wish. And we look forward to seeing you returning.